Good morning, everyone. It's Carol Laurie, and I'm here with my dear friend, Amisha Klawun. How do you say your last name, Amisha? Klawan. Klawan. My Philadelphia accent coming into play, Klawan. Amisha is an integrative physical therapist, and she is, believe it or not, we have to talk about this in today's society, a cultivating rest expert, which I just said to her, isn't it strange that we have to talk about how to cultivate rest? So let's start with that. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Well, you know, I think it's interesting because we live in a culture that is very focused on productivity. And so what can we do? How much can we do? How much can we get done in a day? And what do I have to show for it? And I think that oftentimes that leaves us continually striving. And if we are tired or overwhelmed or feeling like it's too much and we need a nap, a break, whatever it might be, it's not always looked upon positively. You know, I um, am like that. I am very focused on getting a lot done. But the other side of that is I make sure I do my power walks every day and I take when I'm tired in the afternoon, I have like an hour and I will I will nap for 30 minutes or whatever, I have an hour I block out and that's my time, I meditate, I nap. So you can balance you know, the productivity and the determination and the focus, but you also need to do the self-care. And like you said, it's frowned upon. Isn't that interesting? It is, it is. And, and it's kind of, oftentimes it's the way we grow up and what was role modeled. So it's hard to take yeah. those pauses and I think in a way, sometimes we um, also miss the signals of our body during the day. And that can really wreak havoc on us at night when well, we're trying talk to talk about that. What happens when that happens? Well, so, you know, we have all sorts of things that can help our body keep going. So it can be caffeine, it can be sugar, it can be pushing through the kind of waves of tiredness that we have. And when we live our days, in this constant, what's next, what's next, what's next, then when we get to bed at night, oftentimes our minds are racing, we're so exhausted, but we just lay there and we can't sleep. And we're like, why can we not sleep? I have a sleep, now I have a sleeping problem. <laughs> so basically what you're saying, it's go, 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 rush, rush, rush all day. And then we lie down in bed and we expect that we immediately can fall asleep and because our mind is racing so much. And when that doesn't happen, all of a sudden, we now have a sleeping problem. So you're right. That's sort of a dysfunctional. The whole situation is dysfunctional. So how do we cultivate rest? Yeah, well, so, you know, how we live our days is how we sleep at night. And so our subconscious is always pulling in things. Um, how we integrate information is that's coming at us all day. And so when we talk about, you know, things we're consuming, people often um, just only think about nutrition or, or what they're taking in. But really, it's a little bit of everything. Like, what am I listening to during the day? What social media am I looking at? Um, what books am I reading? What sort of TV am I watching? And are these things nourishing to me or are they not? <laughs> really, I think, is the question. And and that's not to say that there's anything wrong with, with watching some shows on Netflix that you enjoy that are maybe not like super enlightening to your life, but you enjoy them. There's nothing wrong with that. But when that becomes our main content, and that's the only thing we're pulling in and we're leaving out the nourishing things through our days, um, it can change the lens that we look at our lives and view our own lives with. Um, and so sometimes we can get into this comparison. I think that happens a lot on, on social oh, yeah. media. Um, yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, there's a lot of good with social media in terms of you can see your friends and family and what's happening with them. And so there is a lot of good. But there's also some things that can come up with... Um, you know, why is this person doing this and I'm not? Why is my life not where they are? How are they on vacation and I'm at work? Whatever. Yeah, I know. Um, 
Um, that happens a lot with women. There's a couple things for women with breast cancer. As a homeopath, there's this energy of breast cancer. It's called the breast cancer or cancer miasm, M-I-A-S-M. And what that is, is certain diseases have certain energies to them. And the breast cancer miasm or the cancer miasm is rush, 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 do, 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 make lists. I have to accomplish this. I have to do that. I, why am I not doing this? Uh, somebody did this and I want to do it better. I mean, there's comparison and perfectionism involved. And what you're describing is 100% of a problem that happens with women with breast cancer, number one. Number two, how do we need to find a way to unhook from this? And I think that that takes an enormous amount of cognitive awareness and focus in the beginning because we're creating a new path for ourselves. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and sometimes when, when we're forging this new path, it can feel really difficult. Mm -hmm. It's so easy just to slip into what we already know. And our habits that create our days, right, are really what create our lives. Um, and so really, uh, I think one big way of starting to shift this is just asking yourself, is this nourishing to me right now or not? And the more things that are nourishing, the more that you'll build these habits that you're taking care of your body and listening to your body. And I think that that's actually one of the first pieces because when we override the signals of our body on a regular basis, we have forgotten how to tune in to what's happening until the body um, is yelling at us. And so that can be health issues, physical symptoms. Um, it can be something big like a breast cancer diagnosis, yeah. autoimmunity, like these kind of things are your body is like, well, listen please listen to what's happening. And that is in no way to say that that we we cause these things to happen, right? But knowing that, you know, how can I nourish myself in this moment? And it could just be going to get a glass of water, getting up and stretching, um, going outside and getting a minute of sunlight. They don't have to be big things, but those little things really add up through the day. I think that's a really important point. Those little things really add up by the end of the day. Because you'll sit at your desk. I notice for me that if I can sit at my desk for hours and not drink water. So I have my my water here and I have mine too. Yes. Two things of water, two different options. And I make sure that when I by the time I get up again, these waters are drunk they're finished. <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> and that makes a difference. And I have my supplements and a little bowl that I need to take in my morning and my lunch and my afternoon. And I make sure that by the end of the morning and the lunch that those supplements are in my body and not in the bowl. So um, we can do the little things gradually. And, and those little things add up to a big shift in how we feel, right? Absolutely. And, you know, I am a big proponent of adding in the good versus taking out the bad, um, because eventually you'll add in so much that the other stuff just goes away. Actually, I like that concept. Add in the good habits. And so even if that's one thing, so um, a personal example for me was uh, trying to drink hot lemon water in the morning. I love that. Yes. I mean, but, but it really took me a long time to make it a habit. And by a long time, I mean, it took like eight months, you know, they say that yeah, a habit. As long as it takes. I mean, there's no, there's no, you know, rigid thing. Oh, this is only going to take one week. And if it takes longer than that, there's something the matter with you. Right. 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 And so, you know, that piece was, you know, I did it some days and I forgot other days. And then it, it was like, ah, why can't I do this simple thing, right? But in reality, like once I finally got it, which, which really, it took a solid eight months. Now, I don't even think about it. 
It's just part of my day. This is what I do. And it's no longer something that I have to do. It's part of my day. And actually, I enjoy it now. So it's the first thing I do in the morning before I have any coffee, tea, anything. And I just have a glass of lemon water and um, and I feel hydrated, which is, which is a great way to start the morning. It's very important. I recommend that women start the morning with hot lemon water, as you said, or a cup of organic green tea or Jane Barlow tinctures, which I'll be um, bringing Jane, who is the CEO of Barlow Herbal on. She's coming on tomorrow for part two of um, her interview because part one, we were in the middle of talking and StreamYard died. So oh, we're no. part two, yes. And the internet isn't perfect. What, what are you going to say? So yeah. um, so I, th I like what you just said, that it took eight months. Now, you can get into a big negative loop in your brain, like, what's the matter with me? Why is this, quote, taking so long? Or it's a simple thing. Why can't I just do it? I mean, that you need to be aware of that negative loop you have in your brain, because that negative loop is going to interfere with you continuing to develop the new healthy habit, which you're choosing to do, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, you know, I personally, I did get stuck in that. I was like, I can't do the simple thing of lemon water. Like what is up? But, you know, after some time, you know, just being persistent with what it is that you want, right? I knew it would be nourishing for me once I figured it out. And then, and now the setup is all there. We always have lemons, right? So it, it was always this, like we didn't have lemons or I couldn't get the water going on, whatever it was, right? Um, and so just giving yourself lots of grace, I think as you're putting in these habits. Um, giving yourself lots of grace. Yeah. It's a beautiful phrase. So how do women, we started talking about this and we got sidetracked because that's what I do. I'm an intuitive interviewer and we follow the path, so to speak. So a woman is realizing that she's not nourishing herself as she's choosing to, as she's developing these new habits. And she's rushing, rushing, rushing and gets into bed like this. Okay, why can't I fall asleep? And how does she, how do you cultivate rest? Yeah. So um, our bodies really respond to where we're at in our day. And so if we're in this process of always rushing, always doing, we're often in our sympathetic nervous systems, right? Kind of our fight and flight, like what's next, what's next, what's next? versus, okay, let me go inward for a moment and see what it is that I truly need. So oftentimes the first thing that I have my clients start with is just doing a body check-in every hour. And so I have them put an alarm on their phone for whatever they're doing and, um, and just take them one minute to just check in with their body. Oftentimes I might have them put a hand on their chest if that feels good for them and just ground the feet down and just take three deep breaths and ask your body what do i need right now i love that it's interesting because when i do my empowered against recurrence live coaching program i always start with the meditation always and i had a meditation uh teacher that was <clears throat> part of this large spiritual community I was part of many years ago. And so I've sat through thousands of meditations. I'm not a, what I would call a meditation expert, but I do know how to help women meditate. And I always start by grounding your feet, imagine yourself in a really comfortable and calm place where you feel great. And whether it's the ocean or the forest, and you can feel the sand in your toes or the moss on your feet, and start there. And that's what you're saying, that we need to start from the feet and up and do a body check-in. Yes. And yeah. that is a, for some women, they've never done that before. It's just an amazing, and the women in my community love it when I do meditation. And can you imagine like, you know, being an older person and never having done a, a like a meditation body check-in situation? That's sort of amazing. Yeah, yeah. That shows how disparate, disparate our society is from 
self-care and body awareness, mind-body alignment. Right, right. Well, and the mind-body piece is really vital because we can try to think through things, but unless we can feel it and allow our emotions to run through our body and transform out of our body out in one way or another, they'll, they'll be with us and our body will let us know that something is not okay. Yeah. So we do this body check-in and then what happens? What do, what do women do next? Well, so then it is following through on what that need was. So if it was go get a glass of water, it's not, oh, okay, great. Now I know what my body needs. Actually get up and do that. Go get the glass of water because part of this is building self-trust and self-compassion for our bodies. I think that oftentimes women tend to think of our bodies as maybe not our best friends, right? Really? Oh, that well, that's part of the betrayal that women feel when they've been yeah. diagnosed with breast cancer. This Absolutely. is a common, we just want to talk about this for a second. It's an unconscious thing that happens for women and it doesn't come up unless, you know, you're the woman is with somebody who understands it. But I hear a lot of the time, how did my body do this to me? I'm just really upset with my body for giving me breast cancer. Yes. Yes. It's a very big thing to not be aware of. And we need to be aware of it to help heal, right? Right. Well, our bodies are our vehicles on this planet, right? And so um, they are meant to be our best friends. And so really showing love and compassion for your body. You know, I run into very similar situations with clients who have had traumatic births um, that didn't go the way they anticipated. So and the so, woman as was birthing a baby and it didn't work out. Right. In, 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 in the way they anticipated. Yeah. Uh, I had to have the C-section as opposed to a vaginal yeah. delivery or whatever. Yeah. Right. And so that, you know, so, so it, it can really be anything that causes this disconnect with our bodies. And, and until that connection comes back, we're not in alignment with, with who we are and where we're, where we're meant to go because our body's over there and our mind spirit are over here. And really we're, we're meant to be physically, emotionally, spiritually all one. And so I didn't know we're talking about rest, but all this really goes together. Yeah, it, it, it does. Um, and this goes back to what I always say, which is the, the Jung, Jung was an analyst, you know, discovered Jung in psychology in the um, early 1900s. And he has, he said, that we live in 2% consciousness and 98% unconsciousness. And the thing, and somebody said to me recently that because of how far we've come that we can change those statistics. So let's say 95% or 98, 95%, 94% unconscious and the rest five or 6% conscious. But the thing about the unconscious is you don't know it. <laughs> I mean, it's there, you know, running your life and you're not aware of it. So the more we can really bring our awareness to open up to what we want to become aware of that's running our life, like what is running your, not you specifically, but I'm encouraging women to ask themselves, what's run, running my inability to, after I do my body check-in, to get up and do what my body's asking for. Why am I not willing or able or choosing not to get the glass of water, go to the bathroom, go for a power walk outside, do dumb paperwork instead of taking a nap or meditating? I mean, what's going on with that behavior of mine that I'm doing? This is a hypothetical conversation that I'm encouraging women to have and have them for themselves and then be able to listen to what comes up. You have to be willing to hear what comes up, right? Absolutely. And I and it's when those small things come up that it's the follow through that leads to the bigger things, right? And so if it's really been a long time since we've listened to our body or accessed our intuition, um, it might be silent for a little while, right? But sometimes it's just sitting with that and being like, okay, well, I am thirsty. 
then what? Right. <laughs> so, may, you know, you may just think it's a thought passing by, but following through with it will lead to the next, to the next, to the next. Right. So this is a really important conversation that we just had. And I want to really, I like what you said, you know, when stuff comes up, it could be violent. That's um, a very big word, but, and I'm not disputing that it could all, it can be very disruptive to your life. And, you know, we get into these habits and we think, you know, it, oh, it's going to be like this and this is the way it's going to be. And we just do a lot without thinking about it. Mm -hmm. But you start doing these body check-ins and you feel like discombobulated. I, I want to say to you all, that's a very good thing because you need to disrupt the waters in order to um, get rid of stuff that you don't need. And I'll give you an example. I just decided I was going to clean out my office and it was a disaster. I took everything out of the, you know, the cabinets off the shelves and it was just total chaos. And then I went through everything and I threw a ton of stuff out that I no longer needed. That was like stagnant energy in like my, my sacred workspace. So, and then I'm putting it back together and it looks different. It looks similar, but different, much cleaner, much better. I mean, I got rid of like, why am I keeping this? It's, I haven't looked at it in two years. It's going into recycling. You need to do that with your psyche and with your habits. And when you first start doing it, it's like everything's a mess until you really begin to put things back together again in ways that are working for you, for who you are now. Absolutely. Yes. Moving out what no longer serves you and pulling in what may serve you coming as as you move forward. That's awesome. So could you share with us a little bit about your integrative uh, physical therapy expertise? Because I think women would really benefit from that. And it has also to do with reconnecting to your body like you just we just shared. Yeah. Yeah, so um, so I, I am an integrative physical therapist with a specialization in visceral therapy and yoga therapy. And so what that means is that we look at the eight different limbs of yoga, um, which are pieces of what of what we just talked about also here um, in terms of, you know, what is our lifestyle? How are we thinking about things? What are we pulling in? Um, and it's not just the yoga poses, um, it's what's also happening in our lives um, leading up to where we're at now. Um, so that's the yoga therapy piece. The visceral therapy piece is where we actually go in and work on the body and follow the lines of tension and move through those areas. And so certain organs in our body can carry certain emotions. And so um and so that piece it's 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 pretty insightful how it it overlaps very consistently overlaps with what's happening in someone's life and where they feel it in their body and where those lines of tension go. That's like the mind body connection. So how do we um help a woman who's had a mastectomy? Uh, I think that I know from talking to hundreds of women that it's a very common thing to just totally self-protectively disconnect from that part of your body. And some women just stop looking at themselves in the mirror. Yeah. And um, that can impact their intimacy with themselves and the intimacy with their spouse and um how they feel about themselves, how they walk, how they hold about themselves. So how can we help a woman just even get in touch a little bit with the fact that there might be some trauma or upsetting experiences there for her? Well, I think that um, it's a little different for each person, depending on the experience that led them to that moment. Um, but I think that the first thing is just Mm -hmm. starting to feel into your own body, right? So you can start with something like a body check-in. Maybe it's just a minute or two of going inward if that feels comfortable to do. Mm -hmm. um, and then as things kind of start to evolve and your nervous system starts to settle, then maybe it's, you know, can I put a hand on the area? 
right? Can I just kind of feel how my lungs are breathing here? Mm -hmm. It does that feel okay to put my hands here? Um, maybe I can just put my hands on my heart and feel my heartbeat, right? And so focusing on really what is happening in the body and what your what you can be present with. And then also, you know, I think that in, in any sort of um, surgery, um, specifically one that has so many emotions around it, is really sensing into, okay, well, what feels good in my body right now? Right away, looking, that's a great way of looking at it. And sometimes, you know, I've had clients where really they've had to focus in on like the tip of their thumb. Because that was the only one yeah, yeah. Um, where they weren't too aware of it and it wasn't irritating them and they felt comfortable just focusing on that point. And really, you know, what you focus on, you start to bring in more of. So if we can just focus on the one piece that maybe feels good, that in no way means that we should be ignoring what doesn't feel good. But sometimes if, if our attention is, is there the majority of the time, then we can forget that maybe there there is some areas of our body that feel okay. And so it's in no way to say that we need to push this down and ignore this. That's not the case. But sometimes we have to start somewhere. And so starting to focus on, well, this feels spacious to me. I can I can move in this area without pain, without feeling a lot of heaviness. And then we start to move through the body. And this is where I really think it's helpful to have kind of one one on one attention oh, yeah. for each experience. I want to encourage us uh, uh, agree with Amisha. Um, this is <clears throat> when you've had trauma and you're not familiar with getting in touch with your body. When you first start and you're doing this by yourself, um, you're going to get lost. Yeah. Um, and there is this thing with the breast cancer miasm. And I don't know if it's because in our society, women are given the message that they need to do everything themselves, that women don't ask enough uh, for help. And my message is, you know, you go to the dentist to get your teeth worked on. You don't think you can read a Google doc and do that yourself. Why do you think that you can do this part of your health recovery yourself. I don't quite get it. So I'm a big proponent for seeking out experts, which is one of the things I'm doing by bringing all my friends and colleagues in. Everyone is an expert in their field and utilizing them for a brief period of time to take you to the next level of where you need to get to your um, in your health recovery. And Amisha is one of those experts, women, I mean, who really is knows what she's doing. And Integrative physical therapy and cultivating rest, as far as I'm concerned, are foundational aspects of health recovery for women with breast cancer or autoimmune disease or colitis or just chronic fatigue, or it's not a just, it's any, any illness, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And so if people are interested in visceral therapy, there is a website that you can go to to find a visceral therapist near you. It's um, IAHP.com. What is it again, please? IAHP.com. And there's a find a therapist feature on there. Mm -hmm. And so you can go to that and find someone who has some experience in visceral mobilization. What uh, is your website, Amisha? My website? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so, so my website is 40 Days to Better Sleep. And so um, there, there is a downloadable um, sheet with just tips to start helping you sleep better that same night. And, uh, that will put you in, in, on, on my communication channel. So, oh, I'm so sorry. It's, it's, it's the number 40. Oh, it's, uh, well, let's yeah. get rid of that. That's, you know, that's why we have delete comment. Sorry. <laughs> and so, um, yeah. There we go. I did it right this time. Um, there we go, right? Yes. Yay. Um, I think that this is an important phrase, 40 days. 
it's not five days and it's not three days and it's not 20 days it's 40 days and it can take even longer than 40 mm -hmm. days yeah. it takes as long as it takes yes and so really that is a framework right so it's 40 days to well so so my so the course that i have is called revolutionize your sleep in 40 days and it's really just learning some of these techniques that we've talked about so we go in and we practice the breath we have different kinds of breath work in there right and we have different kinds of movements we have a wind down routine for sleep we have a morning routine we have what are we doing through the day um and so pulling in what works right will take out what is maybe not working so something like if you're having a second cup of coffee at noon, right? Maybe, then, idea. <laughs> right? So, but maybe then we're having, um, you know, an, or an organic tea or we're having lemon water or we're having a kombucha, whatever it might be. Um, but something else that still feels really nourishing. And then you don't have the craving for that second cup of coffee. And so it's really the whole kind of theme of cultivating rest is how can we add in the good and focus on what feels nourishing and good so that our nervous systems stay in our kind of rest and digest system versus this is too far out of my comfort zone. I can't do this. I love this. Um, I love the focus on the good and that the good eventually pushes out the unhealthy habits. And I, I once had somebody come to see me uh, for, you know, chronic, horrible ins insomnia. And you know, I mean, they've seen lots of different practitioners, they've been on drugs. And so finally, you know, I go through a very extensive intake and I say, so how many cups of coffee do you drink a day? And the woman looked at me and said, nobody ever asked me that question. Wow. It was 12. Oh, wow. I yeah. said, oh, well, guess what? Nothing you're doing or have done is going to work because you're taking enough caffeine to, you know, fuel an army. So we got to get you off the coffee. Yeah. So, she, I mean, we went down from 12, we gradually from 12 to eight to four to two and she had you know there is this coffee detox headache that people get yeah. and i used homeopathy for that and then we cut coffee out and that process took a month yeah and then we were able to do an adrenal stress index test to see where she was because with 12 cups of coffee any testing would have been a waste of money and she and i should have referred to someone like you at this point she needed a uh, sleep help habit help yeah. because she was just to, and sleep habits are a real thing mm -hmm. you're you know you can't run around like a crazy person doing 18 million things every day and then get into bed and think you're going to be able to fall asleep or you know be in bed working on your computer and have it next to you with your iphone next to you and think you're going to be able to sleep right right yeah. Right. And, and I mean, I often liken it to, you know, if 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 you're around children or have children. Right. And how we put them to bed. Right. We would never have them running around the house like crazy and then drop them into bed and say, go to sleep. Go to sleep. Right? Bye. Go to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's it's there's usually a routine that is very similar each night that begins to guide their nervous systems into, oh, okay, I take a warm bath before bed and then I have this nice lotion put on me. And then, you know, we read a story, I get in my comfy PJs and then I relax into bed while somebody rubs my back or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's the same every night. And so they can sink into that and rely on that and their body can start to take the cues of, oh, okay, oh, I'm getting in my bath. This must mean I'm getting ready for bed. And so the body can really start to unwind. And we still need that as adults. We do. We do need it more. And you can put some, you know, relaxing lavender essential oils, real oils, not fragrant stuff, yeah. into your bath and some Epsom salts for detoxification. I, I love taking baths. I think they're, yeah. they're very um, cleansing, right? 
Absolutely. Absolutely. And when we take them as little kids, but then oftentimes not as adults, right? And so when I turn for baths, I have to take a two second shower so I can get dressed and run out of the house. That's what I'm told a lot. Yes. And so it goes back to the rush, rush, do, do philosophy. Right. And so, you know, can you give if you enjoy bats, can you give yourself the time and space to take one once start with once a week or once every couple of weeks and see how you feel? Right. And it's really always coming back to checking in. Right. Because I think the other piece of this is that sometimes as as women, um, I think that we give away our power when something happens to us, mm-hmm. to whoever, the doctor, the therapist, the disease, whoever the can disease. help us. We give away our power to the disease. Yeah. Yeah. And the truth is, you know, the healing comes from within. And so everyone else is a guide for you to look within. And your body already knows what it needs. And so the more that we can begin to access that inner knowing and that ancient wisdom we already have, um, the more that this can start to grow and flower and we step into our power. And so if that's taking a bath once a week and allowing yourself to just be, let that happen and allow yourself right? Um, That's a word that I use so much throughout um, any work with clients is just how can you allow yourself to be, right? And just trust that your body now knows how to begin its recovery process. It's a beautiful um, perspective. Um, How can you allow yourself to be is the mind part and then the, the cognitive action body part is to create an environment in your body that is healthy for you and unhealthy for cancer cells Mm -hmm. and that is what we're striving to do i mean we need both the mind and the body to be in alignment for recovering your health so you can restore your life that's really important absolutely yeah, so beautiful, Amisha. Thank you so much. Um, I want to encourage everyone to reach out to Amisha, and we, she has a free gift, 40 days to better sleep.com. And she is a wonderful resource for cultivating rest, cultivating sleep habits, and her integrative approach to getting back in touch to your with your body post breast cancer trauma mastectomy surgery, even if you think you're fine, quote, I'm fine, it doesn't hurt to um, seek an expert for a checkup to see what comes up for you because don't think you can do all of these aspects by yourself because um, it's sort of like going to thinking you can fix your cavity by yourself. I mean, we need experts to guide us uh, through these winding paths, so to speak, right? Absolutely. So thank you so much for being here, Amisha, and sharing your beauty and your expertise and your perspective. It's really in alignment with what I've been um, sharing with my community for for quite a while. Oh, fantastic. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so grateful for the opportunity. Thank you again. And to the ladies in my Empowered Against Recurrence program, we just finished our bonus week of um, preventing, uh, reducing side effects of tamoxifen and aromatase inhibitors. And that is the end of the live coaching program, but you still have access to me from the members only group. And you will be receiving emails from me with uh, links and uh, offers such as working with wonderful Amisha and other experts in the future. And for those of you in the Facebook community here, I really welcome you to reach out to me with any questions. Support at thepathofbreastcancer.com is how you reach me. And this is Carol Laurie signing off for now. There'll be more tomorrow. So I'll see you then. Amisha, hold on for just two seconds and we'll just talk for a minute. Everyone else have a lovely day. It's been wonderful to see you and I will be seeing you soon. Bye for now.